better never rest. Good Thursday morning, Masters Thursday morning. They're going to get started here in just a little bit, but we got Georgia football to talk because G-Day's coming up. It's the first time since Kirby Smart took over as head coach that the two things collide. Uh, but, you know, priorities are in order uh, only mm. because only because I didn't end up getting my Saturday tickets because uh, I would I would be there if that was the case. But anyway, Ooh. we got G-Day coming up, Rusty. And, uh, man, I want to start – the first thing I want to get to is is let's just talk about our general thoughts on G Day over the years, and um, I thought it would be a good time just to kind of discuss the things you've seen at G Day, the meaningless things you've seen at G Day, the the meaningful things you've seen at G Day. Obviously, ninety three K Day takes the cake. Um, it was it was <laughs> the craziest one ever. What what do you remember from G? What's your earliest memory from G Day? Jake, I went to G Day at Clark Central High School. Oh, did you? You remember the year they redid the stadium? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, I think it was '96 that spring. They were getting ready for the soccer, and yeah, the Olympics, uh, yeah, yeah. So, I've been to G Day at Clark Central High School. How do you think that would go now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'd be tough. To, that'd be a tough ticket. That'd be a tough ticket. Oh uh, man, I was in, I was in, uh, I was living down in Athens in school there, going to school there, and. Uh, I remember going to that game thinking, did, damn, did, I think I just went to see Pepper High School play. You know, it was like a, it's like a Saturday, it's like a Saturday morning. You know, there was fans there, but like, can you imagine Georgia playing a spring game now at like Clark Central High School? Uh, but I think I went to, uh, so um, a lot of people know I'm from Rome. Uh, kid, I, uh, I would say a kid. A man that I grew up kind of idolizing because he was really the first really recruit that I knew who he was and wound up being a captain for Georgia's team. Todd Wheeler was all SEC. I think he was Vince Dooley's last captain in 88. He went to my high school. I think I was a sixth grader, fifth grader when he was a senior. And uh, so I went to a spring game to see him play maybe 86, 87. And just thought that was like, the greatest thing of all time, you know, sliced bread to see those, those guys do that back then, man, you like, as soon as the game's over, you go on the field, take pictures, like hang out, you know, shoot, you know, whatever, talk to the guys. And those guys are like larger than life. So, it, you know, it's a lot different now. I've seen 93,000. I remember being in 93,000, 93 K and you get there and probably, uh, 10 minutes after the game started, I was in the closed end zone. I always can't figure out which one. I'm opposite the scoreboard and I can see the bridge and the and 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 that whole way there and Jake there were there were so many people that couldn't get in that day. Yeah. I mean, so you think about the excitement and I, I look at John Calipari last night at Arkansas and the excitement those fans had that 93k day for for Kirby Smart and kind of how it kicked off everything but Remember people not being able to get into a spring game was insane. And, you know, you and I have covered recruiting a long time. And De DeAndre Swift said, hey, man, he was there as a junior. And he said, man, when I saw that, that, that I knew right then that was a place for me, man. Like, I, I, I was this place is crazy. They love football. And think about that lasting impression of 93,000 on so many fans, but obviously so many recruits there that day. Uh, one, one thing, let me say this before I get off the subject. You know, we put our list out yesterday. We'll, we'll update that more today for G-Day. And it's a really good list. It's a really good list. Uh, there's top 100 players from all over the country. There's four stars everywhere. There's five stars everywhere. Uh, it's not it's not as like it was three years ago, you know, or four years ago when you get one visit out of these kids there in the spring and then you try to push them to G-Day. These kids take so many visits now that it kind of, I would say, neutralizes the the one big day deal you know like kirby smart wants you there as many times as possible if you can come two times in march come on so uh i, I think people look on that thing you're gonna see 150 you know five stars and four stars that those days are over uh still a great great list but uh that's kind of what that what what the tone is now these kids take so many visits that they're not just going one day for one 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 g day yeah, and, and there's also so many visits that happen now, and it's crazy that they're happening now. 
maybe more than they used to that we don't know about. You know, they, mm-hmm. they try so hard to kind of keep them under the radar. You even mentioned that with Mason Short, maybe some visits that, that he made to Athens that, that we didn't know. Oh, 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 there, there's been a quiet visit this week. But oh, okay, okay. Can't touch that one, but there's it's, – it's still quiet visit season. Yeah, no doubt about it. Um, looking back, I, one of the things I'll always remember from G-Day, I believe it was the 2005 G-Day. It was because D.J. Shockley was a quarterback. Uh, obviously, you had D.J. Shockley there, but the first play from scrimmage, you remember what happened? Wishbone. Wishbone. <laughs> Up in the wishbone with Danny Ware, Craig Lumpkin, oh, and uh, man. Thomas Brown. Thomas and I, Brown. Believe it, I believe it was one, like a power sweep out of the wishbone, and it went for like 45 yards, like just yeah, out of the Stafford threw, Stafford threw a bomb first play, right, for a um, touchdown. I think Stafford threw a bomb for a touchdown to Chris you may Burrow. Be right. I, I, may I, think, missed, I, I may have missed 2006 G Day. I um, think Stafford threw. I think Stafford unloaded one first play for about 80, and yeah, the rest is history. Chris Durham listens to this sometimes. Sorry if it wasn't you, but I'll give you credit anyway. Yeah, we'll just say you you called it, Chris yeah. Durham. Yep. But yeah, uh, but overall, man. I uh, haven't covered as many as I have, haven't watched as many as I did as a student. Um, and, and before I got into this business, um, there's a, it, it's your G day window is about 20 minutes, 20 real time minutes. <laughs> once, once they start and you get about 20 minutes in and you realize that this, the juice, you know, is just not there, you know, like 93 K day was different. And, and the, you know, that's why Kirby wanted to get, I mean, Hell, it was probably more like a 100K day. And then, you know, if you count everybody that thought they were going to get in, it's probably like 125, 130K day. Dude. Um, there was, it was like you said, there were so many people who couldn't get into that. I remember looking at a full, full slate of every, seemed like every seat was full and you're in the press box and, and you could see kind of up, uh, you could kind of see up, uh, up the bridge drive, whatever road that is. I can't even, I don't know why yeah. I missed it, but up towards Baldwin Street. Yeah. And, you know, you can see, you could just see that street was full of people trying to come down. I was like, y'all ain't got nowhere to go. You have nowhere to go. You better go hang out in the bookstore. You better go watch this thing in the Tate Center because it's, you're not going to be able to watch it from, from inside the stadium. I had this kid walk up and sit down beside me. I got to quit saying kid. I'm an old dude. He was a kid. This kid comes sit down beside me and he's probably 6'4, 250. And I said, man, I, I'm pretty sure I cover you somewhere. And he laughed. He said, I know you are, Mr. Bad Oh, He said, wrong sport. I said, who are you? He said, I'm Kumar Rocker. Okay. I said, yeah, yeah different sport, my man, but you definitely a five-star. So he was, uh, you know, his dad, Tracy, was coaching at Georgia at the time. And uh, I had a chance to sit beside him. And, and that's the first time I'd ever actually seen him in person. I'm thinking, man, what does this kid look like on the mound at 6'5", 250, throwing yeah. – a hundred miles an hour at you, but uh, that was kind of a cool experience to meet him for the first time. He was actually going into his junior year, I think, uh, in high school. A couple more G Day things. Uh, I remember seeing Jay Hayes down on the sideline, the Notre Dame transfer, graduate transfer, yeah. and we were scrambling to try to figure out who is that. Looks like somebody's uncle, first of all. Yeah. Like he looks twenty five <laughs> years old, twenty six years old. He, who is that? Is he here as a recruit? Finally, figure out who that is, and obviously George ended up getting him, and he helped him out a little bit, and then. Um, the one, the one I'll never the and, and it really is not at G Day per se, but I remember being on the sideline and I looked over and I saw this guy. And he's a giant man, like an absolute giant man, but boy was he put together so bad. And I said, uh, I looked at his name tag and I said, yeah, let me. I'll look that guy up. Looked him up on my phone and and started looking at him and he was a three star recruit and I was like, yeah, Georgia never take this kid. Like that's one of the best worst looking kids on the hoof that I've ever seen. It's Jordan Davis. No, oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Just he he looked he weighed he weighed 375, 380. If he weighed an ounce, he was pear shaped. He did not look like a a he just looked like a giant kid. But he looked like one of those kids that you, that you hear Kirby Smart talk about. It's like every kid six three and above I talk to when I go to a high school. If I see a kid that's six three and above, I I, I immediately try to strike up a conversation because only what I think the thing is like two percent of the population is six three or above. Um, and I was like, yeah, they, they invited that kid here because he was big. Maybe he'll be a, maybe they'll sign him as a guard project or something. And told uh, that, tell yeah. that story. I told that story before Trey Scott telling me. The only time I ever thought Trey Scott, maybe. I said, Rusty, y'all wrong on Jordan Davis. And would, it, like Trey Scott, it, it wouldn't know. Maybe he said, I'm telling you right now, y'all are all wrong on this dude. And I was like, you know, okay. I didn't know what to say, you know, but damn sure it was right. Yeah, hundred. You, th- you would you would think a college coach might know a little bit more than than me? How about that? Yeah, 
they they often do. All right, let's get into it here real quick. Let's just start just kind of discussing what we're looking for on G Day. Give me a prediction. Give me give me something that you think will happen in the G Day game, whether it's a player prediction, a, a, a position group prediction. What are you thinking for G Day? Aaron Smith, two touchdowns. Okay. One one he over. Had one last year. I'll go two and I'll go one over forty five. One over forty five yards. He's going they're gonna they're gonna let him they're gonna let him stretch they're gonna let him stretch the field and don't think for one minute they're not gonna put a little bit on tape for team to look at with him. Obviously you've seen it before, but you have to be, you know, um you have to put a few things on tape, but they'll be very, very vanilla. Uh, and, and scheme wise, it's still football, man. I mean it's not we're not playing two in touch, but uh, they'll be very vanilla in their scheme. Don't, 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 don't be Rusty Mansell and watch every tape and try to pick apart the, the blocking scheme and all that stuff. But this, this tape, this is not the one. This is to enjoy, have fun. Football's back you're with your family. You get to tailgate. You're in Athens. Enjoy everything. But uh, it, it, you're going to see some, some pretty basic stuff, especially on the defensive side. Uh, you know that uh, I don't know who's coaching this year. I don't know if they've announced that stuff yet, but. Whoever whoever's coaching the defensive side, quote unquote head coach, it'll be very very basic. I'm going to make a um, a prediction that I know will be true, um, and and I'm having a little fun with our Georgia fans here, our listeners, uh, our viewers, and our subscribers over at Dogs HQ. There's going to be they're going to panic over something. Uh, they're going to be real worried about something. Yeah, um, yeah. No matter Mean, what. It just means more, baby. Just means more. It's going to yeah. be and uh, it, in that same vein. You know there there will be a Ronnie Powell, okay? There there will be a, a spring game legend come out of this thing that has a big game. Uh, oh man, I think he can do big things for the team this year. I think this guy this guy's going to help out because um, there's always that guy too. But uh, in the same vein as is the receivers, I think we're going to be trying to figure out. I think there's going to be a little bit of a. My prediction is there's going to be a little bit of a debate on who had the best day, just because yeah. it's it, you know again we we brought this up many times. It's an air show. They throw the ball around a lot. And when you throw the ball around a lot, I think, you know, and, and you can't touch a can't touch a quarterback. So he's gonna feel he, he's gonna feel he's gonna feel good in the pocket. Yeah. He's gonna feel good in the pocket. Um you got a couple of guys that have been around for a while and they've played this defense over and over again and, and all that stuff. Um and I think that, you know, when you start talking about all right, uh Arian Smith, Dylan Bell, Colby Young, London Humphreys, Dominic Lovett, Ra Ra Thomas. Um, Sokovi White, Anthony Evans, all of these guys you've heard something good about during the spring. They've, they've all done something kind of impressive. They've all done something to kind of generate some buzz. I think you're probably going to have three or four of those guys have pretty good days, and, and we're going to be sitting there on Sunday saying, you know, you're going to have this guy saying, well, Arian Smith had a great, you know, the best day, and, and you're going to say, well, this guy's going to be saying Dylan Bell had the best day. Um, also wouldn't surprise me if a guy like Dylan Bell maybe – you know, got some reps, but not a ton of reps because uh, you're talking about a junior there who's been around for a while, played a lot of meaningful football for you. But though that, that's something uh, – and, and also one thing you also see out of G-Day pretty much every year is you see one trick play. You see him kind of pull out just – Oh, one, yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, just turn out one. Who was it? Was it Dewan Mathis that caught the long touchdown pass? Might have been ever. It was a throwback. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember AJ uh, AJ Bryant kind of having a, a trick play type deal uh, in one of his G days too. So wow, um, that's, a, you, that's a blast from the past. Yeah, man, AJ Bryant. Uh, that that was that. that was right when I started to get real hot and heavy in recruiting. When George, I need to ask Randy Bryant, McMichael Blake about Ball. him. Yeah, was it Blake Barnes, Blake Barnes, Blake Barnes. In class out of Mississippi. Um, all right, so. Actually, let's do this. Let's talk about our man, Andy Ludicky over at My Perfect Franchise. We didn't have our Tuesday show. That's when we normally get a chance to tell you guys about Andy and his website and his consultation services. So we're having to push it back to Thursday this week. But listen, Andy Ludicky is the man. And if you're a displaced corporate executive or wanting to put your career in your own hands, are you? or if you're just an experienced entrepreneur and you want to branch out, you want to do something a little different than what you're already doing, Andy Ludicky at MyPerfectFranchise.net can help you out. Andy is a huge college sports fan. He's a franchise veteran, having owned multiple franchises and businesses. He can use his expertise to help you find your American dream through a very thorough consultation and evaluation process. Call Andy 
put your life and career in your own hands. Best of all, his services are 100% free to you. So what do you have to lose? Find your perfect franchise at myperfectfranchise.net. And uh, Andy Ludicky will take care of you. Uh, and uh, we appreciate him uh, for partnering up with our show. Rusty, is there anything that can happen in the G-Day game? I mean, like, obviously there's something that can happen, but is there something within reason that that could, and I, I know my answer to this, that could really make you have a serious concern, like a, like a legitimate, serious, long-term concern about Georgia going into 2024? I don't talk about it. Jay, Jay Reed Hodges made the comments. So I don't I don't talk about it. So no concerns scheme-wise, no concerns performance-wise. It is very, very vanilla and um, – I want to talk about what the only bad thing come out of G Day could be. So, very superstitious. So I don't bring it up. <laughs> very superstitious. I was a little slow on the uptake there. I was like, okay. Very superstitious. I don't. Bring yeah, I tell you what, me and you couldn't be on. You don't. You don't talk about the no hitter in eighth inning, Jake. You don't do it. We could not be on opposite ends of the spectrum when it comes to that. Like I, yeah. I am almost. Well, I take that back. Only with the Braves. Only with the Braves. Mainly ah. in the playoffs. Um, Oof. I was, I mean, I was standing at different places when they were in the world series a couple years ago, I was standing at different places in the house. Yeah. Um, I would open the, I would open the front door a certain, at a certain angle. Um, I was just doing everything I could and I really believe I helped them win it, but we'll see. Um, you know, maybe, maybe that's a question we can ask when we get to the next life, but very yeah, I'm the same way too, man. There's, there's absolutely delicious. nothing that could happen. You could say, mm -hmm. Hey, Georgia, Georgia average. 17 yards of carry. I don't care. Yeah. Um, Georgia got no pass rush. I don't care. Georgia blew mm -hmm. 19 coverages. I do not. Hey, let me let me let me say this. And I was going, let me say this one thing. I was talking to uh some guys that I, I trust with, with football, and, and we're talking about Georgia's kind of lack of pass rush, I would say sacks. I believe, if I'm correct, Georgia, Jake, can you look this up as part of your job? Georgia was number one in the country getting off the field on third down. Yeah. But their well, sacks. They their, might have been two. They might have two, been two. Might have been two. Their sacks were not even in the top, like, 50. What's more important, sacks or getting off the field? So, you know, that's one thing you kind of – we talk about a lot about sacks and pressures and those types of things. But the main thing is to get stops, get them off the field. No, and, they were number uh, one. You were right. Yeah, they're, they're, so not, they're number, 20, number one. 25.71% <clears throat> conversion rate they allowed. Number one yeah. in the country at getting yeah. off the field on third down. They allowed – check this out. In in 14 games, in 14 games, Georgia allowed 45 third down conversions. That's what I'm saying. Like, get get your ass off the field. Little you over three I mean? a game. I, I'm 100% I'm into – I love a dominant pass rusher. Man, I love it when that quarterback knows, man, you, you got two and a half seconds or you're going to be looking at the sun uh, or the moon as a night game. Uh, but 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 for me, man, get off the field. And I think Georgia is so creative in ways. Uh, watching Jalen Walker highlights the other day, someone had him on uh, X and thought that was a great cut-up they had. But um, you know, it's just – Let's kind of take some things with a grain of salt. I do think Georgia's got a, a really good edge room right now. I think there's some young kids in there that can flat out go. I think they're going to be pretty good there. I think they're going to be a little bit more, a little, a little bit longer. They're trying to get bigger in that room. It's going to help. Uh, but man, just keep in mind the main thing is to get off the field and give the offense the ball back. And they they're number one in the country, number one in all of football last year doing that. Get them off the field. Georgia allowed last year – this this is blowing my mind. I got into a little deep dive on the stats here. Georgia allowed uh, more than four third-down conversions in a game last year three times. And it was against Missouri, it was against Ole Miss, and it was against South Carolina. Mm. All three of those games came at home. Two, uh, one of them was a complete blowout, comfortable win, and I think probably a lot of those third down conversions came late with uh, Spencer, uh, not uh, Spencer Sanders coming in the game and kind of doing that. But then, you know, Missouri five of thirteen, uh, South Carolina uh, ended up five of thirteen as well. Um, they had uh, they had several games here where they only allowed two. Um, most of the season was two: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight games. Where they allowed two or fewer third down conversions in a game, you're going to win a lot of ball games 
playing teams like that on third. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, that's a really good point, man. I mean, I, it's something that I honestly is a point that I kind of forgot about. I was kind of making it last year when everybody was like, where's the pass rush? Where's the pass rush? I'm like, listen, I don't know. I know sacks are great. They put teams behind the pass rush and, and pressure on the quarterback generates turnovers and havoc. And you never not want to be like, well, we don't need them because we're successful without them. You're always trying to generate one. Yeah. Ultimately, if you want to look at the big picture and what really matters, that that is what matters. The whole package there, too. I mean, you can pressure and not get a sack because of quarterback. I went back. I know I'm sick. and I've said everybody I got a problem. I went back and watched the Ole Miss game the other night and um, just on a random Tuesday night. And you go back and watch the amount of pressures and how they were able to get him, get him off of his his kind of making him get rid of the ball quicker than he wanted to. And then great coverage and and those all those things, Jackson. Uh, you know, darts happen to throw balls. He's not ready to throw the, the you know, and, and they're not ready for that. And then you 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 package that with great coverage on the back end, and even though you don't get him to the ground, that pressure caused him to be an incomplete. Pressure calls him to hey, get him off the field, and, and that's one thing I really liked uh, going back and look. I, I, I've watched the Missouri game recently too, just the defensive just a defensive thing because I'm fascinated the way they played that. And after that first drive to, to burden for that touchdown, uh, they swapped uh, Kwame, uh, they put Lassiter on him and, and it was like, dude, it's over. And, and I, I thought that was fascinating. They went three on three, man. I've said it before. They went, who, they went basketball. Mm-hmm. Our three, our three best athletes, we're going man to man, your three best athletes and we'll see what we can do. And, you know, listen, credit to Missouri because that damn running back was a bowling ball and he kept them in that game until late. But, uh, offensively, they gave they gave they gave Missouri issues athletically because these three DBs locked into your three best wide receivers. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. DGD also with the sickness. I watch it. I watch game replays every Saturday to keep me ready for the season. Uh, that's that's the sickness, buddy. Um, uh, and and the, and you know the bad thing about it is there's there's no help for that. There's there's no, no there's no group. I'm there's fifty. No, there's no there's no group. You just have to. You just have to say I'm I, I'm rusting. I got a problem. You know. I don't think you can. I don't think you can recite the standards prayer over that. Like I just. I think you just <laughs> got to deal with that sickness. It just. Uh, um, that's just what kind of happens with it. Um, one thing I will say uh, that that I am kind of excited to see uh, at G Day on Rusty is I'm excited to see Georgia's offensive line because mm. um, here's the deal. The, people will talk about this at ad nauseum. Something I brought up on the show. Everybody's, you know, Georgia's defensive line was was a problem. No, it wasn't a problem. It wasn't as good as it had been. Um, and but I'm still, I mean, I still think you're probably talking about at worst a top ten college football defensive line in the country last year. Um, you know, I mean, we can say Michigan's was better. I have a hard time saying that definitively because I watched Alabama gash Michigan when it handed the ball off to the tune of about six yards of carry. Um, two bad snaps and some sacks kind of factored in there. I thought Georgia, you know, had some moments where it struggled against the run against Alabama, had some moments where it, Alabama couldn't run the ball at all. Uh, eventually, Georgia ended up getting kind of worn down, mainly, you know, Nazir Stackhouse in that game. But I still think Georgia's good and very good and very talented on the defensive line. But we've heard all spring about how that offensive line has kind of gotten the best of them. And you want to talk about a team, if you want to be great offensively, if you want to be elite offensively, um, it starts up front with that offensive line. It starts with with short yardage, something that Georgia struggled with in that SEC championship game. It struggles with protecting on third down so that you can be one of the best teams like Georgia was this past year and has been for a while, being one of the best teams at converting on third down. And you got to be real good up front. And Man, you talk about three experienced tackles, three experienced guards. Jared Wilson kind of – making his world debut there mm. at center with all the talk you've heard about him, really fired up about this this offensive yeah. line at Georgia. Physical, maulers. I mean, just it's so funny because I always, I, you know, I love to ask people, they go to practice. And, you know, we all follow them. Everybody's in the comments right here. They know exactly what's going on. They, um, they, they follow like we do. But if you take a casual, someone that's a Georgia Bulldog fan, they're able to go to practice. I've had like three this spring. So I mean, who who is fifty six? I'm like, that's Michael Morris, dude. And he doesn't look human. And he's also the strongest player on the team. And and uh, you know, you talking about somebody, Matt Godwin, you know, the guy that we feel like is connected to this program as is, friend of us, and does does our podcast and is on our message board. 
you know, he'll say, Rusty, there's nobody that moves another human like Michael Morris. I mean, he will electrocute you when he hits you. You're 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 moving when he when he, he engages in you. So uh I, I think I think fans are gonna be excited to see Michael Morris, Dylan Fairchild, Tate Ratlett, just those three guards in there. And um, uh, you know, so it'll be exciting to see at O line. I tell you what, there's nobody in the country ready to get this game over with more than that Georgia D line because they don't have to fool with that mess again. Uh, you know what I mean? Like they'll get yeah. to they'll get to get some of somebody else next time they're in that stadium. Uh, so, you know, you, you, listen, it's grown man world. I know they love competing and it makes them better. Uh, but Georgia offensively right now, I don't know. It's the most athletic group they've ever had, but I would say it's the most physical group they've ever had. And, and man, they've got some dudes that will flat out maul you. And, uh, you better, you better have some, you better have an anchor in the middle against Georgia because the, 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 that interior specifically, that interior, we don't talk enough about. We don't talk enough about you know left tackle. We don't talk enough about right tackle. They got they got bodies there, and they got guys that can play that position. But I think the strength is those four guys. I would say I think people are about to realize what Jared Wilson is and how athletic he is. Jake, we might get one season this guy. Might yeah. he might be done. He might be one and done. And and uh, he played behind a team leader, Cedric Ram Pran, who's about to be probably a third or fourth round draft pick. One of the one of the one of the best leaders, I think, Georgia coaches would say in that locker room, one of the most respected kids, young men that, that, that they've had in a long time. And uh, uh, Jared Wilson's going to be he, – he is athletically better. He's athletically more gifted than Cedric Van Pran, but he has to play to kind of get to that level. But athletically, they're going to be able to do some things with him that they, they weren't able to do with, with Cedric. Yeah, and I'm excited to see that. I really am. You know, Kirby even said it. I'm excited for the world to see uh, to see um, you know Jared Wilson. Uh, you know that Georgia defensive line's thinking. You know, kind of got the same mentality I had back when I used to have to. My stomach was rumbling in church back in the day. Like you look mm -hmm. at look over at Dad's watch, and it's like, you know, all right, you know, probably getting out of here in 30 minutes. You know, you still got something <laughs> left to go. Fall camp's still sitting out there, but you're glad what you've done so far is behind it because dinner's oh, coming. You're gonna at some point in the near future, Georgia's defensive line, you know, and in, in the fall camp after about two or three weeks of fall camp, uh, they're gonna get a chance to start going against the scouts, and they yeah. got to worry about that. They don't have to worry about the Georgia offensive line anymore. But you're 100 percent right, man. That the interior of that Georgia, I look at it like this. Think about it since Kirby Smart's been to Georgia, and I'm not gonna bring up any names because I don't want these. I don't want anybody to think that I'm calling them a weak link, but. Most of the time, every offensive line's got a weak link. All right, there's there's mm -hmm. there's that one guy, but most of the time, you've had a guard in there that is in there because he knows what to do, and he's solid, and he's got a high floor and maybe a little bit of a lower ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can think of it several times that it, that's been the case. I don't think this offensive line has that on the interior, and and you know, you, I mean, Dylan Fairchild, Mauler. Tate Ratledge, Mauler, um, you, know, you, you know, Micah Morris. I mean, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I don't know if you've seen that movie, The Revenant. I think Micah Morris got gypped out of an Oscar because I, I think he was the grizzly bear in that movie. Like, I mean, he was, he was, he was the one that that mauled Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, he, he is a he is an absolute stud, and you've heard that about him for years. And sometimes it just you've got to earn the trust that you're not going to step the wrong way in a big situation. You got to earn the trust that you're not going to, you know, that you're that, that you're going to pick up on a check and if they flip the play or if they or if they kill a run that that you're going to do the right thing and not get them in trouble and that, that's the one thing that coaches fear more than anything is that you're going to be on a different page than everybody else and it seems like Michael Morris has earned that trust now and now he can put those raw talents on display. Georgia and it's not anything new but I, I think I can reiterate it that Georgia offensive line, when, you, when you're an opposing team, you know you get together as an opposing team and you watch tape on Monday or, or Sunday night and your D-line coach looks at you and says, you better get your ass ready this week and you better get your chin strap buckled. Uh, you know, going back to what you said about no weakness, they're going to start taking that little, that little pointer and they're going to say, look what he just did to that guy and look what he did to that guy and look what he did to this guy and watch what he does right here. Uh, you better be ready to strap up. You know, you're going to have a physical week when you play Georgia. You're going to have physical practices because you know that's what you're about to get. I think they probably take a ton of pride in that. And that's not, a, you know, anything new, I would think. But 
I think, you know, kind of Georgia's got to that point to where, you know, listen, if you play these guys, you better be ready to buckle it up because this offensive line will come downhill on you in a heartbeat. I go back to that play last year where Mims passed that guy off to Tate Rattledge and they they basically wrestled Manny a choke slam that Tennessee uh, poor D lineman. How many times do you think he had to watch that uh, with his yeah. boys? How many times do you think his boys had to send him that going, hey, dude, remember what they did to you right here? And everybody's played football has had that happen. Unfortunately, that young man had it happen uh, on national TV. And then every scout that has, uh, you know, broke down to Marius Mims and every guy on X and social media has played that play over the last couple of weeks, that little duo between those two. But, uh, you know, it, it's a physical bunch and, and potentials there. And I'm excited. I'm excited to see Monroe Freeland. Uh, is another guy that we don't talk about enough. That he's going to play a ton. He's going to play a ton. Uh, I know Jeremy Johnson uh, on our on our group text said, "Man, I saw Monroe Freeland the other day. That kid is huge, and you know he's carrying 315 pounds, and he is he is every bit as good as advertised. And he's going to be. I don't know if he gets enough mentions, uh, but uh, he's he's going to get his reps at right tackle this year as well. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. And excited to see that George offensive line. Um, Wish, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not super excited about G Day. It just it drags. I'm on. on I'm gonna need some more effort out of you, man. It I'm gonna need. Some, remember you're that. Gonna, you, just, you remember you're that? gonna get my best effort. Okay. It's, it's yeah. like uh, you know, I ain't super. You know, I, I wasn't super excited to 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 mo. You know, to do yard work, but I do my best. You know? <laughs> well, that's what I need. It's, it's this what, is what this is. I, I'm much. I'm much more fired up for for a home game in the fall. Um, than, than I am for G-Day, no doubt about it. It's just kind of dragging through that and getting through all that. But listen, we will be back with you guys um, uh, on Sunday to talk about G-Day and to talk about everything that went down. I will uh, not be. Uh, well, Dogs HQ will be. Um, and uh, we'll be back with you on Sunday. And then, obviously, we got Bark After Dark on Monday and two shows the following week, so two Georgia shows the following week. So we ain't going anywhere. Things may slow down a little bit after spring practice ends, but uh, it won't be long, Rusty, before uh, official visit season is did, here. Did, did you leave anything in the merch tent is the most important thing? Uh, I didn't buy a whole lot this year, man. Um, I actually bought a hat that I didn't like, and then I remembered that somebody asked me to grab them a hat, and so, uh, I'm <laughs> I'm going to end up sending them that hat. So, um, yeah. So uh, I, who you got? Who you got? My man John Tweet Sports. More than John, he asked you who you got. Who you got winning the Masters? Um, man, I don't know. I I usually don't get into that. Um, I'm I I'm a big Brooks Kepka fan. I've always have been. Um. When that first U.S. Open, he won just the kind of the way that he just put it away over and over and over again. I've always been impressed with that. I love watching him, like, lock in and play at a really high level. I feel like it's the, you know, when he is on, it's the closest thing to Tiger we've seen since Tiger, and it's not even really close to Tiger. Um, but listen, I I would have felt a little bit better about it before we got all this rain and the course started playing longer. But man, Brian Harmon is just playing some really good golf. And yeah, lefties, lefties, it, Augusta National is good to lefties. Yeah. And uh, I would love to see Brian Harmon make it. Oh, right dude, now. Brian it's Harmon wins that thing. Course, but, but uh, yeah, I don't know if he's got the length to do it. I don't know if he's got the length there for wet, that course. Wet weather. Um, I feel like if it was dry, maybe he could get into it. But The weekend um, would be nice once it gets here. My Calcutta for uh, our sports radio. Uh, in Atlanta, nine two ninety game. We had a pick yesterday. I got Xander Shoffley, Brooks Kepka, Jordan Spieth, Cameron Smith, and Colin Morikawa. I need one of those guys to win this thing. So I'll get a free meal in Atlanta. I need this this year. We'll see. But Brian Harmon, man, big time. Uh, Harris English, a lot of a lot of UGA uh, blood down there this week in, in, in Augusta for sure. All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Have fun watching this weekend, and we'll be back with you on Sunday.